manage all this? Give them credit. How else? They don't mind extending credit when the catch is good. The only problem is where we find the customer. Oh, we'll get them. I know we will. I'll help you. Finish up now, Oswald. Where's Dal? Um, he's around somewhere. He'll be all right. You run along now. Todd, don't worry. Things will get better soon.
Well, Mr. Clark, how's business? Well, uh, of course, this is uh, the off-season just now, Mr. Derrick. Mr. Eckhart, the bank's concern is the situation right now. Today. Today? Well, look at it. There's nobody. It's been like this for five weeks. What do they expect of me? Only that you meet the terms of your loan agreement. Nothing personal about it. Simply a matter of mathematics. Not now, son. Run along, son. I'm busy now. Run along. Uh, <clears throat> as uh, I was saying, you were saying there's nothing personal about it. How personal is a boy's ability to hear? What's that worth, Mr. Derrick? Mr. Eckhorpe, unless you can make up the payments that are in arrears by the first of the month, the bank will have to foreclose. But, but that's only two weeks. I suppose. Uh, oh, what happened to you? <laughs> I went down to the waterfront after some real food. And it was there, too. Fine catch. Fish, shrimp, clams, lobsters. Ah, it sounds heavenly. It sure does. I almost had the most beautiful shrimp you ever saw. A giant boy sneak up on me, seized me, and grabbed me in his fist. Courage and self-preservation is all that saved me. Well, where's the shrimp? Didn't you get it? My life was at stake, young lady. Don't you understand that? Oh, well, Fitzy, we understand it, but it's just that you're safe now, and we're still hungry. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go back. No, never. Okay, if it's you. If you don't want to go, we'll go without you. Come on, then. Right. At least you could wait until the others return. The others? I know. We'll surprise them with a seafood dinner. Great. Keep the home fires burning, Fitz. I just remember the greatest recipe for cookies. Sure. So. <laughs> I wanted to surprise you with a seafood banquet. A seafood banquet? For how long have they been gone? Long enough to get down to the waterfront. Stay here with me. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
hospital. I just hope he doesn't pick up this shell there, and if he does start to pick it up, we go into action. afford to lose him. Well, son, you found another shell. You're happy, huh? Wish it were that easy for me. Oh, you want to play our shell game, huh? You think you got your father beat this time, is that it? See about that.
house with you. I want to talk to your mother anyway. bigger shell than he found me. I hope you weren't too busy to notice. I'm ashamed to say, have I ever been too busy? Sorry. I know you always find time, Nasla. It's just that... It's just that I've been thinking how much harder it's going to be as he gets older. Like that. Oh, Telf, it's nobody's fault. It's certainly not yours. You're a wonderful father and a wonderful husband. You're just being too hard on yourself. Besides, maybe we can send him to that special school now. Hustler, sit down, man. I want to talk to you. We can't send him to any school. We can't even go on living here. What I'm trying to tell you is that we're broke, out of money. What I'm trying to say is that the bank sent Mr. Deer out to see me at the stand today. The bank won't give us any more time. If we can't raise the money by the end of the month, they'll foreclose. Oh, they can't. They can't. Oh, it's tough that they take the stand away. How will we pay for it? Tell him we're busy. I, we've got to make some decisions, some plans. I can't play with him now. Please tell me. Yeah. Be not your shell. When you clean out your shell, you make sure you get everything out, and Father and I are going to go outside for a minute. Suppose he cleans the ship. We go outside, he can't see us, and then he won't interrupt.
Misty. Is there anything up there you can use for a rope? There's a, a spool of thread. be the solution to all our problems? The government offers rewards for them. They're hostile aliens from another planet. Well, we're not any more hostile than you are. <laughs> I've heard they're very clever. Their technology is advanced over ours. They're here to destroy us and take over the planet. We've heard a lot of propaganda. Now look. We're here by accident. All we want is our freedom to return to our home. I don't believe you. Well, I didn't expect it. There are others, Tal. Dal says that he caught one, a different one. He got away into the woods, the woods where he's not allowed to go in alone, and that's why he didn't follow him. Must have been what he was trying to tell me. But you don't have to follow him, do you, son? You may not be able to hear, but your eyes make up for that. We'll track them to their hideout. Uh, we better take them with us. Um, well, I guess we might as well put them in here. That'll make the boy happy. Think that kid can't track the two back to camp? He just might. He may have eyes like a hawk. Or we better get there before they do. Right. <laughs> do well at that school. Wait and see. At least he's nice to his kid. Yeah, yeah beautiful. Just keep in mind when he plans to pay the tuition. The 
think this will burn? I don't know. <laughs> This must be that spaceship. Think of the money the government will pay for it. Tom, maybe the other little person that Al saw is inside that ship. Time since we crashed here, if I never saw any of you again, it'd be too soon. But now with the spaceship gone, well, there was always some hope before. Well, we're not doing any good here. Come on. Where? To free the rest of them. Where else? <laughs> How? With our bare hands? Forget it. Barry! Bitch, you! How'd you get away? <laughs> we were never captured. Steve warned us about Alien before the giants came. We hid, but they took the ship. What's going to become of us? Ask the optimist. Bitch, you. When Steve radioed, did he know where the giants planned on taking them? No. No. I... Uh, the last thing he said to us was, forget anything else, but be sure to keep this. Fit you, you may be a lifesaver. spaceship and we're being carried. In which direction? Uh, I think we're we're going back to the house. We're heading that way. Okay, keep in contact now. 
Right. So. The closet, maybe? Yeah, that'll be fine. of anything. Looks like we're in some kind of closet. I'll go into town and ask some questions. Now keep the closet door shut until I get back. Couldn't we just call City Hall and tell them that we have the little people here? Well, I'm not exactly sure how to go about turning them in. Remember, they're treacherous. Keep the closet door shut all the time I'm away. All right. I think something just coming to the side. You'll be going to that special school soon. Isn't it wonderful? It's really sad, you know. Well, at least the reward money will be put to a good use. Maybe she gave us the answer. Hmm, the giant woman? The giant mother. You tell me. <laughs> Dan? Are you there? Go ahead, Steve. Where are you? Just outside the house. We saw the father leave a little while ago. Are you okay? Yeah, right. Look, let me talk to Mark. Sure. Yes, Steve. Mark, do you think you could build a giant hearing aid from the stuff that we have here in the spaceship? Well, let's say I can. How's that going to get you and the girls out of there? Well, the girls are going to be part of the deal. It's going to be them for, for you and Dan. How do we handle it? Well, first, I've got to talk to the, the mother and make a deal with her, but you're going to have to come back in here and get her to open the closet door so I can speak to her. Okay. We're on our way. I'll leave your hatchet or any other weapon behind, because I want you and Mark to look very peaceful. All right. I consider this foolhardy. Take this with you, and keep an eye out for the father or anyone else that comes this way. Or what I think about it, I... I do, Fitzhugh, I do, but there isn't time. And you will keep an eye out for anyone that comes this way, won't you? You ready, Mark? As ready as I'll ever be. Let's go. This way, lad.
Where did you come from? That doesn't matter right now, ma'am. Uh, the captain of our spaceship would like to talk with you. He wants you to open the closet door. No. No, I won't. Now, what kind of a trick is this? It's not a trick. We want to help your son. Oh, no, you're in danger, as my husband told me. Please, ma'am, just speak with Captain Burton. I want to talk to you about your son, about helping him to hear. You can't help him. You're trying to trick me. And how did they know that you want to talk to me about Dad? Well, because I, I called them in this, in this radio here. That's how they know. They're so mysterious about that. You can't make Dal hear. We've had the best doctors. But we think we can. <sighs> How can you? Well, first of all, as your husband told you, our technology is very advanced. And then, of course, there's our, um, our small size, which makes it even easier. Three hearing aids were made for him. They were specially made, and none of them worked. It was just a waste of money. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that ours won't work, and it won't cost you any money. You're not doing all this just for Dell. No, there are, uh, there are two conditions. What conditions? Well, first of all, I want to exchange these two girls for the two men. And secondly, if we make the hearing aids and it works, we all get our freedom. I can't answer that. You'll have to wait till my husband gets home. My son wants to hear, and I want him to hear. But I, I can't give you any promises. Talf will have to decide that. What should I be afraid of? Valerie, Betty, come here. Now take a look at us. We're exactly what you see. We're little people. We want to help your son so that we can help ourselves. Now does it look like like we could harm you? If I let those two go and uh, that hearing aid doesn't work, my husband's going to be very angry. <laughs> but you have the two men in their place. All right, I'll take a chance. I'll let the girls down. Oh... Be worth it if you can make a hearing aid that, that really works. You think it'll work, Mr. Fitzgerald? You have to ask such things. Who cares what I think anyway? Who cares if you and I are left in this perilous land, homeless and alone? You don't think it will work? Please, my boy. Our situation is precarious enough without you adding to it. Just keep watching the giant, all right? She let you go. Yeah. Now all we have to do is help me get that hearing aid built before the father giant gets back. <laughs>
Can you hear me? Back. You better get out of there. You can. Take it easy, get you. Where is he? He's heading up the street. Okay. Well, another minute or two. I can get it now, Steve. Mark, we'll never be able to test this thing on the boy and get away before the father gets here. Well, if it works, maybe it'll listen to reason. Come on. I'm going to take a look. All right. Place it up to his ear like this. Be very careful because it is delicate. to do. They came in here and they told me that their captain wanted to speak to me. Who came in? Those men, there were, there were two little men and, and they told me to open this door. Hostile. Don't you realize our hostile aliens, enemies? This could have been a powerful weapon. It could have killed them. Here, whatever it is, keep it. Now look, this is a hearing aid. It's not a weapon. We're not your enemies. We thought we could help your son. Leave my son alone. Mister, we built this hearing aid on the chance that if it worked, you'd free us and our spaceship. That doesn't mean we weren't sincere about helping your son. Even if you're telling the truth, it didn't work. You lost. You fooled my wife. Don't try it with me. Should have worked. Just obviously not enough. 
power for that big ear. Well, it has to be the acoustical output. The amplifier's not big enough for a giant. How big would it have to be? We don't have anything that big. Even if we did, he wouldn't let us try it again. You know, I don't know if it's the same thing as, uh, as acoustical output, but when the girls and I were in that, uh, in that shell, I remember that the sound was really amplified. Steve, you should have been the engineer. A seashell would make a perfect sound amplifier. Not the one you were in, that's too big. One of the smaller ones out on the table. <laughs> you guys are forgetting one little thing. What's that? The boy's father's not about to give us another chance. Yeah, he's pretty adamant, but he... He does love his boy. Well, if we come up with a better idea, let's try it. Yeah. We sure got nothing to lose now. Right. Let's hope. Help! Help! I want to talk to you again. What do you want? We know what's wrong with this hearing aid. We know how to fix it. But we're going to need one of the shells over on the table. No. Look, you're denying your son the right to hear. My son is deaf. He will never be able to hear. I don't want him hurt like that again. Give up. Can't you get it through your head? We're trying to help you, son. You're going to. The money from the reward will send him to the school for the deaf, with some left over. But you would make a lot more money on the patent from the hearing aid. And what's more, your son would be able to hear in the bargain. No, Captain. <laughs> That's the plan, Fitz. You, you think you can do it? Of course we can do it. Good. I hope. Well, here it goes. You stay here. I would like to have reserves to call upon when I'm out on attack. <laughs> We should let them try. If it doesn't work, we still have them. But how can we trust them? We don't even know what they're up to. trying to buy us time so that we can fix that hearing aid. Now, sooner or later, your husband's going to find them. So this is our very last chance. Would you please help us so that we can help your son? I can't. I've already gone behind Tal's back. Lady, forget that. Put first things first. All right. Stay by the radio. Keeps the two calls.
next show should be just right. one of the shells for the hearing aid. They never quit trying. Now they're not gonna try again. It's already been fixed. That's as much as you'll do. It will not be tried out of my son. Oh, don't be a fool, man. What have you got to lose? I don't know. Not a lot of things. The government says the little people are our enemies. They're here to destroy us. Am I a fool, Oslo? What have I done? Why don't you ask Dal what you've done? He can hear. He can hear. He can hear. Oh, I said he can hear. Believe it or not, it was our pleasure. Now it's your turn. Let us go. You've done something wonderful. Impossible, we thought. But... What do you mean, but? Hey, now look. Your son can hear. And you're going to make a lot of money from that patent. Now what else do you want? It's not what I want. It's against the law to help you, to not turn you in. I can't break the law. Tough, please. Well, in town, I ask a lot of questions. They'll know I never made the hearing aid. They'll put the two together. They'll know it was the little people. If I let them go free, they'll put me in jail. Then what will you and Dal do? Yeah. 
say it. Dal. Mommy. He's as stubborn as he's big. I'm going to talk to your father about the little people. Keep in contact with you. I will. You heard it. The scan might do it. It might. My timing better be perfect. He's put us down. Credit, how else? We don't mind extending credit. 
And the catch is good. The only problem is where we find the customers. Oh, we'll get them. I know we will. I'll help you. Finish up now, Oswald. Where's Dal? Oh, he's around somewhere. He'll be all right. You run along now. Todd, don't worry. Things will get better soon. Well, 
out, Mr. Clark. How's business? Well, uh, of course, this is uh, the off-season just now, Mr. Derrick. Mr. Eckhart, the bank's concern is the situation right now. Today. Today? Well, look at it. There's nobody. It's been like this for five weeks. What do they expect of me? Only that you meet the terms of your loan agreement. Nothing personal about it. Simply a matter of mathematics. Not now, son. Run along, son. I'm busy now. Run along. Uh, <clears throat> as uh, I was saying, you were saying there's nothing personal about it. How personal is a boy's ability to hear? What's that worth, Mr. Derrick? Mr. Eckhorpe, unless you can make up the payments that are in arrears by the first of the month, the bank will have to foreclose. But, but that's only two weeks. I suppose. Uh, oh, what happened to you? <laughs> I went down to the waterfront after some real food. And it was there, too. Fine catch. Fish, shrimp, clams, lobsters. Ah, it sounds heavenly. It sure does. I almost had the most beautiful shrimp you ever saw. A giant boy sneak up on me, seized me, and grabbed me in his fist. Courage and self-preservation is all that saved me. Well, where's the shrimp? Didn't you get it? My life was at stake, young lady. Don't you understand that? Oh, well, that you, we understand it, but it's just that you're safe now, and we're still hungry. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's go back. No, never. Okay, if it's you. If you don't want to go, we'll go without you. Come on, then. Right. At least you could wait until the others return. The others? I know. We'll surprise them with the seafood dinner. Great. Keep the home fires burning, Fitz. I just remember the greatest recipe for Pokey. Sure. <laughs> to surprise you with a seafood banquet. A seafood banquet? How long have they been gone? Long enough to get down to the waterfront. Stay here with me. Thank you. 
He didn't hear it. Must be dead. I just hope he doesn't pick up this shell there, and if he does start to pick it up, we go into action. afford to lose him. Well, son, you found another shell. You're happy, huh? Wish it were that easy for me. Oh, you want to play our shell game, huh? You think you got your father beat this time, is that it? See about that. Well, pretty close. 
you win. You're the new champion. I'll go up to the house with you. I want to talk to your mother anyway. bigger shell than he found me. I hope you weren't too busy to notice. I'm ashamed to say, have I ever been too busy? Sorry. I know you always find time, Nasla. It's just that... It's just that I've been thinking how much harder it's going to be as he gets older. Like that. Oh, Talf, it's nobody's fault. It's certainly not yours. You're a wonderful father and a wonderful husband. You're just being too hard on yourself. Besides, maybe we can send him to that special school now. Hustler, sit down, man. I want to talk to you. We can't send him to any school. We can't even go on living here. What do you mean? What I'm trying to tell you is that we're broke, out of money. What I'm trying to say is... 